Welcome to Weasel Jaw Digital, and today we're going to be looking at the B-Wing, the equipment, builds. Um, I'm sorry to say that the B-Wing is not all that impressive. I was really hoping for more. It's kind of let down by both of the new ships, but we will still take a look at it here, and I'll give you some advice on how best to use it. Your weapon systems. There are two weapon systems. They are guided and unguided. To start off with, we have our standard laser cannon. What's interesting about the B-Wing weapons is they all do damage and ion damage. So the standard laser cannon does 533 DPS and 400 ion DPS. This is good against ships and against capital ships. Against fighters and ships, I guess I should say. There is, however, a 45% maneuverability penalty. So while you're firing this weapon, you are going to be less maneuverable. So it's going to be harder to track targets, turn, any kind of dogfighting type thing. Um, you also have the heavy rotary cannon. Now this does more DPS, 766, but less ion DPS, so 283. It also has a wind-up time of 1.7 seconds and a maneuverability penalty of 60%, so even less maneuverability, plus you have the wind-up time. Higher DPS versus hull, less ion DPS. As far as I'm concerned, really the standard cannon is a better deal. There is guided versions of both, but they gimp the amount of damage so significantly that it's hard to use them. Over here, your standard laser cannon has 933 DPS. The guided version of it only has 400 DPS, less than half. Here for the heavy rotary cannon, you're looking at a little over 1,000 DPS, and here you're dealing with a little over 400 DPS. So the guided ones especially since you move so slow it's not going to matter anyways you're not dog fighting you're not trying to get these weapons to actually hit star fighters it's not going to happen the standard laser cannon works a little bit better in my mind because you do not have the 1.7 second wind up time which hurts your ability to get damage on targets it also doesn't have the maneuverability penalty the Ion DPS is good against capital ships to either disable systems or take down their shields. Um, the combined DPS and Ion DPS is pretty good. Nothing wrong with taking the heavy rotary cannon, especially if you're going after like a capital ship or the frigates and the shields are already down. Then this rotary cannon is a little bit better of a situation, um, especially if you're just going to be focusing on those capital ships because you have time to get that wind up going. Your maneuverability doesn't matter too much because you're going to be making attack runs on a large, slow moving ship. As always, we're going to skip auxiliary. We're going to come back to that later. Countermeasures, you have three. You have the particle burst chaff. Um, it's not very good. It's a small area of effect of 200 meters, has a lifespan of three seconds, a nine second cooldown, ammo capacity of three, only helps you if the missiles are coming directly from behind you. This can be used tactically to like put defensive shields um, to block missiles, but the area of effect is so small that it is just better to shoot down the missiles with your guns. I really don't like these. They're not very effective in combat, in dogfights, or in fleet battles or anything. There is the sensor jammer. This allows you to break all incoming locks and make it impossible to lock onto you for four seconds. It can only be used once and has a 26 second cooldown. Because of those reasons, I don't find it very useful. In this ship, if you're making suicidal attack runs on a capital ship, you know, I guess this works. Um, as always though, the more dependable one is a Seeker Warheads, 750 meter range can knock out two incoming missiles, a 12 second cooldown, four ammo capacity. Very, very useful. They can be used to take out mines even before they're active. It works in all directions from your ship. They're just a solid component. For hulls, you have four choices. There's of course a standard hull. There's the reflect hull, which gives you some stealth abilities. 
and I almost see the value for this ship. Um, you could be making long range attacks and trying to stay off radar. Um, problem is it cuts into your health pretty significantly for that passive health or for that passive stealth and that stealth range is 1500 meters. So chances are it's really not going to come into play very often. If that stealth range was reduced, it would be more useful, but as is not a huge fan of that one. The deflector hull increases your max shields, decreases your health. This is literally the worst pick you could ever make. The reason for that is you have the lowest shields in the game at 400. Even an A-wing has more shields than that. Um, and you also have one of the larger hulls at 1600, um, which you know you can get past on some builds and whatnot, but 1600 hull is a lot of hull. It does not make any sense to give up 35% of your health for a very piddly boost to shields. So this one makes absolutely no sense. That leaves us with only one viable option, and that's the dampener hull. This increases the amount of time it takes for enemies to get a lock on your ship. Um, it doubles that time, so it's a lot harder for them to get locks. That coupled with your good countermeasures should keep you safe from secondary weapons. Max health is reduced by 10%. Now, that's not a big deal. It's 160 health. It kind of hurts, but it's not make or break. So that is why I typically will go with the dampener hull. If you don't like that loss of health, then you're going standard hull. There isn't a, another choice that makes any sense in here. Shields. Shields are a tough one because there's nothing really good here. The Nimble Deflector increases shield regen but lowers max shields. Again, you already have the lowest shields in the game. Lowering them even more makes them almost worthless. On top of that, increasing the shield regen, you're so slow that you have to be completely out of battle to have a chance of regenerating your shields. It's ridiculous. So, not a good choice. The Resonant Shield. Um, this gives you a laser charge rate um, of plus 100%, so it really can boost your, your laser charge rate, but only if your shields are fully overcharged. At the same time, it reduces max shields, but you have no shield decay. Problem is, you're, again, you're so big, you're so bulky, one hit against you, you're not going to have fully overcharged shields. Um, you're not going to be able to dodge incoming fire to detract from that. So your laser charge rate is always going to be less than what you're hoping for. Um, and max shields makes you that much more vulnerable. So again, this just kind of sucks. There is the conversion shield. And I've tried this out because I do kind of like it on some builds. On this ship, it's not really a good build. It's okay, though. I mean, you can use it if you know what you're doing. Um, what this does is when your shields reach zero, it exchanges your ammo for a brief but nearly invincible barrier. The downside is with very little shields, you're going to reach zero very easily, especially in fleet battles when you're making bombing runs against capital ships or against the frigates or against the, the Corvette-class ships. It doesn't matter. Um, because at 400 shields, you have 200 forward, 200 aft. So just one decent hit to your rear takes down that arc. One decent hit to the front takes down that arc. You have no shields. It then drains all of your weapons, and you no longer can shoot. This ship recharges weapons fire very slowly. So once you run out of ammo, you're out. It's going to take you a long time to charge back up. This is not a ship that's going to survive long if it can't fight. If you're doing suicidal bombing runs against a capital ship, you're taking in a whole bunch of bombs, you're doing a bombing run, and you don't expect to make it out alive, um, and you're not going to be worried about firing with your main weapons, the conversion shield's not bad. Um, I don't like it, though, just because 
it does take away your ability to shoot. Will keep you alive a little bit longer on those attack runs. Um, so it's that's the trade-off. Do you want to be able to do more damage with your weapons? Or do you want to survive a little bit longer to make sure you can get that bombing run done? Your choice. Um, either works. I just found this kills your weapons so quickly that it's not worth it. So I've been going with standard deflector shields. However, again, suicide bombing runs, conversion shields, okay. Engines, again, I just can't find anything here that I really like. The unstable sublight engine is a potential for those suicidal bombing runs. Increases your speed and acceleration, which is nice on a ship this slow and, and unwieldy. But it gimps your health and shields by a significant portion. Um, you don't have much shields to go with anyways. You don't have much health. This could actually make it harder for you to actually get to your target. You are extremely slow in this ship. Even when you have full boost to engines and everything. Um, even when you're boosting, you're so big and not overly fast that you can get blown up by decent fighter coverage before you ever get near your target. So losing that health and shields is, is a tough one. It's about the only option that's viable though, besides the standard engine. Thrust engine increases your max speed, which I guess is nice, but lowers your acceleration and maneuverability. Your acceleration and your maneuverability are awful. They are worst in the game. Um, so is your speed. Everything about this ship is slow and bulky and unmaneuverable. Lowering acceleration and maneuverability even more means you're going to be flying in a straight line. And your speed really isn't going to be that fast, even boosted that way. Trying to up your base speed is not how this ship flies. So I don't really see the point of this. Plus, it's going to make it much harder to maneuver for your bombing runs um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's a no for me. Slam engine is the passive boost charge rate to your boost, um, but it lowers your max speed. Again, you're really slow. Slowing you down even more doesn't help. So not great. The unstable engine is a possibility, but more often than not, I'm going to be using the sublight engine. So really, we're not looking at a lot of changes here. Um, which is kind of sad. They give you a couple options, but none of them are really good. Um, we'll talk about the ship just a little bit here, general stats. Max hull is 1,600. And of course, with the uh, hull that we're using, that's lowering that health just a little bit, but making it harder for them to lock missiles. Your shields are the lowest in the game at 400. Max speed is awfully slow at 100. Max acceleration and maneuverability are disgustingly low at 50 and 51. You can't dogfight. You're just not going to do it. Don't try. Don't waste your time. This is a great ship for jousting. Um, if you're on defense with this ship, sit by the target you want to defend. Find someone that's coming in at you. Shoot down any of their incoming missiles. Fire on them straight up. Your hull should help keep you alive for a joust. That's about all it's good for there. Um, you're not going to be able to chase targets. You're not going to be able to lead targets effectively because everything is going to be too fast for you to keep your target sights on them. Now, auxiliary weapons are interesting. And because of the poor speed, maneuverability, acceleration, all that stuff, a lot of them aren't even good. I guess we'll start here with the gyro. The gyro is an interesting one. Um, it's called the Query Gyro, which Query is the guy that developed the B-Wing in the Rebels cartoon. Um, you can hold the button for gyroscopic cockpit roll, which means you can make the big lower fin rotate around you instead of you turning the whole ship. It's interesting. You can do it. It doesn't serve a lot of purpose. 
Um, it doesn't move very fast. Um, really no more fast than you can maneuver yourself. I suppose in conjunction with turning your ship and turning it at the same time, you could move it pretty quickly. But it doesn't really do much for you. Keep in mind that wherever that fin, that big fin is pointed, is down. And that's where your bombs are going to go. So if you turn that, your bombs are going to go in the direction it's pointed. Now turning your gyroscopic action here with the, with the module doesn't make you harder to hit because you're a big, slow, bulky ship that's easy to hit no matter what. So it doesn't really help there. It doesn't really distract people that are chasing you. doesn't make it harder to line up targets. It could be used, I guess, to change your bombing angle, but so can just rotating your ship. Um, so that functionality really serves very little purpose. Go ahead and use it if you want. It looks kind of neat when you're firing, but doesn't do much. The interesting part about this, though, is it doubles your max ammo of your other auxiliary slot or reduces the cooldown by 50%. Um, of your other auxiliary weapon. So that's kind of neat. What that means is it changes the aspect of all these other weapons. Um, the composite beam cannon that does a thousand DPS but has a cooldown of 10 seconds. If you have that module, it now has a five second cooldown. So that's pretty interesting. Um, your bombs, instead of having five bombs, you now have 10 bombs. So you can see how that really changes things a bit. I have found in this ship, it's best to focus on one thing and just hit it hard. So I've been using this module to give myself more bombs. Um, it works pretty well. But we will go through the rest of these auxiliary weapons, take a look at them. The Emergency Assault Shield gives you a, a big shield in front of your ship. Um, it lowers the incoming damage from that arc by like 90%. Only lasts 3 seconds, has a 20 second cooldown. Also reduces your maneuverability, so you're stuck in kind of a straight line flight at that point. It can be nice for bombing runs. But you're probably not going to escape from a from a bombing run anyways. And I just... <laughs> if you're using that, you don't have any secondary weapons unless you drop the module and take a secondary weapon. And then your secondary weapon isn't very good. Because of all those reasons, the assault shield really doesn't shine for me. The Seeker Mines... I guess if you're playing this in dogfight, the Seeker Mines are probably a really good option for you. But in fleet battles, uh, it's a worthless option for you. So I would avoid it. Barrage Rockets. 60 damage per rocket is very unimpressive, even with 40 of them. Um, on an assault run, I mean, that, that really doesn't add up to a whole heck of a lot of damage overall. Um, you're looking at 2,400 damage from that. And it would take you a little bit to gun through all of those. You're going to get more damage out of bombs. You're going to get more damage out of beam cannons. Um, you're going to get more damage out of your missiles. The barrage rockets just aren't a good option. Even if you double them up using the... the gyro module you're not going to do a whole lot with these so I don't find them as a good option the fact that you can't maneuver very quickly means even in a dogfighting situation they're not very useful so I would avoid those also proton torpedoes 4000 damage a 1500 meter lock on um, cooldown of 10 seconds, ammo capacity of 5. Weak homing. These are used to assault capital ships that have their shields removed. Um, the damage is really light 
And this ship is not a ship that can easily make multiple attack runs, even from that range. Um, any kind of defenders, TIE fighters, TIE interceptors that see you are going to target you, and they're going to blow you away. And there's not going to be anything you can do about it. So at best, you might get off two of these things. Um, unless you have a really well-oiled team that's giving you a lot of cover. Because of that, again, I'm just not overly impressed by this option. The Ion Torpedo, 24,000 damage ion. Um, 1,500 meter lock-on, 6 ammo. Really high ion damage. i got to give you credit for that. It's impressive to take down shields like that however again you're a big target you're going to be drawing lots of attention and if the shields go down on whatever your target is that you're firing at these things are worthless then their damage is greatly reduced and you're not going to be very effective it's okay in a fleet battle um for an early run against the capital ship, but certainly not my first choice. Um, if you're making a dedicated ion build, taking the ion torpedoes in one slot and then the ion bombs in the other slot is a pretty good option. The ion bombs will do, with 10 ammo, will do 40,000 ion damage. That coupled with an ion torpedo is pretty impressive. Um, you're going to be knocking out 64,000 ion damage. And that's going to, I believe, drop the shields of a capital ship. So that really opens them up. So having a build that's based around that, ion bombs, ion torpedo, maybe the unstable engine, and just doing a suicidal run. Get out to about 1,500 meters, make sure your engines are charged, launch that torpedo as soon as it gets locked, use your boost, fly in super fast, stay above their shields, drop those ion bombs, your ion torpedo will come in, take out the rest of the shields, and you sit there doing damage until you blow up. Um, or you could try to escape out if you still have engine boost, which you should if you're starting it at 1500. Uh, it's not a bad move, except you've depleted about everything you got of use then. So it's really that, and you're about done. So make of that what you will. Uh, it is effective if you can make it. Your other option, though, if you want to do an ion build, is actually using the gyro and the ion bombs, because then you're going to be able to drop 80,000 damage in ion. Um, you're going to strip those shields super fast, um, and you're going to be in the same situation, and you're not going to have to be waiting for that torpedo. You're not going to be have to hoping that they don't shoot that torpedo down or that you don't die before the torpedo lands or something. You just get in there, bomb those shields. This is something that I'm going to be trying out. Um, I'm going to be putting those ion bombs on. I'm going to be running in and just dropping those and seeing how quickly I can just drop the shields on those Star Destroyers. It's not going to be great against those, those frigates in the middle. I um, actually have better deal for those because those shields go down and they don't come back up. The ion beam... And the composite beam both suffer from the same problem. Um, they have long cooldowns, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Now that's not bad usually. Like on the Y-Wings, I actually like this. On the TIE Bombers, I actually like these beams. Use the beam with your weapon fire while you're making your approach, then do your bombing run, then get the heck out. If you have the gyro, that cuts these down to a cooldown of 5 seconds and 7.5 seconds. seconds. Makes them pretty impressive. Your maneuverability penalty is 90% though, so you're going to be flying in a straight line. You're already incredibly slow. You're already an enticing target. I have found it hard to get more than one blast off with the beam cannon, even when using the gyro. 
And if that's the case, it's not very effective. Um, one blast of your beam cannon is going to do 3,000 damage. That's three bombs. So even if you get two blasts off before you die, that's 6,000 damage. Well, if I'm using the gyro and my proton bombs, I can bring 10 bombs, which is 10,000 damage. I just don't find that this ship is survivable enough to use these beam cannons. Um, same goes for the ion. You're not going to be able to sit there and actually keep shooting this at shields in any way, shape, or form. You're going to die before you get a chance. Especially with that seven and a half second cooldown, you may not even get a second shot before you get shot down. So, I really don't like the beam cannons on this thing either. Um, so that really leaves two things, and that's the ion bombs and the proton bombs. Those, coupled with the gyro control, make some interesting builds. The other thing you need to know about this ship, the way it differs from other ships, is the way it builds up its engine boost. It builds up a very, very slow engine boost at like half the rate of the other Republic fighters. The Defender builds up a very fast engine boost. The B-Wing builds up a very slow engine boost. However, that does mean that the engine boost lasts much, much longer. So a full engine boost from a B-Wing means you can be assaulting capital ships from the 2,500 to 3,000 meter range when you start that boost. And this has been something that has come in handy and has actually made this ship somewhat useful. Fighting capital ships, I don't find it to be great. Capital ships will start shooting you at about 1,500 meters. By the time you fly in, make the bombing run, and try to get out, you're going to get picked apart. But for frigates and for corvettes, you can actually make pretty effective bombing runs um, and escape. So you can build up a full engine charge, hit your boost before you hit 1500 meters, you can make your pass, bomb them, and then boost yourself away back to safety. Um, so I've been able to make several you know, bombing runs and repair type things with um, against the frigates using this gyro and either the proton bombs or the ion bombs if you want to, and just boost in, drop your bombs, boost back out to repair and refit. I find that to be a very effective strategy. I like that better than using the Y-Wings doing a similar thing. And it's because of the number of bombs this ship can carry with the gyro. So, it's really the only strength I found on this ship. If you want to use a combination of beams and bombs, the Y-Wing's better. If you want a ship that can do bombing runs but can at least pretend to dogfight, you want the Y-Wing. If you want long-range missile sniping... You want to go with the X-Wing. This ship has components to do all of those different things, but because of its speed and acceleration and maneuverability, it's just not good at any of those. So it's really, it's two key factors are making bombing runs and retreats against the frigates or making pretty much suicidal bombing runs against the Star Destroyer, the capital ship. So you want to make the best out of those. For me, that means standard laser cannon, gyro, proton bomb, seeker warheads, dampener hull, standard deflector, standard engines. This is what I'm going to use against the frigates. This is what I'm going to use against the capital ship also. Now there is a secondary build where I'm going to pop this over to ion bombs. And I'm going to do the unstable engine. This is going to be a suicidal bomb run, basically, against the capital ship. I'm going to make, I'm going to get to about 2,000 meters. I'm going to use my entire boost. I'm going to fly up. I'm going to 
just above their shields, drop all those ion bombs, take those shields down, and I'm going to park myself in front of a shield generator and just unload. Um, you know, might actually go with the standard laser on that. Might try the rotary cannon. I'm worried about that wind-up time and whether or not I'll need any maneuverability. Uh, but you'll strip those shields. You'll do some damage to the shield generators. When you blow up, you'll blow up next to the shield generators, hopefully doing some more damage. That's really about the only moves to make with this. Now, things get a little bit different if you have an organized team. If you have a really dependable organized team um, that can fly cover for you, if uh, someone can fly in front of you and take some hits while you're making your approach, um, multiple B-Wings are extremely effective on bombing runs if they come in at the same time. They can do a massive amount of damage, and you're less likely to lose all of them at the same time. But in standard fleet battle mode, you're going to get torn apart really easy. So just about any bombing run past the frigates is going to be a suicidal run. So that's the equipment. That's the builds. Like I said, for most situations, um, there's a ship that can do it better than the B-Wing. Um, but for suicidal runs, a B-Wing lays down a lot of damage really quickly, and it's pretty effective. I can get some really high capital ship damage. Um, one other thing to keep in mind, though, is you don't get points for capital ship damage. <laughs> you get points for destroying turrets. You get points for destroying the ships. On the capital ship, you get points for destroying hull segments and their structures. Um, but just doing damage to shields or two ships are not going to give you much for points. Um, you get nothing. So if you're trying to get high on your point tally, the B-Wing's probably not going to be a good option for you. So keep that in mind. Not that points are important, but some people really find that they are for them, and that's fine. So hopefully I have helped hone in your knowledge on the B-Wing, helped you build a better B-Wing. Hopefully this knowledge will pay off for you. Um, don't try to use them. Dogfights are worthless there. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.